without, just leave me alone. Let me take the direction of my life in my own hands. Friends, thanks for the love. Friends, how many of you have the control of your own life? If you do not have the control in your own life, of your own life, you will be taken for a ride. Right? So, let me take you back to my childhood. Most of it, I think, some of it was mentioned in my um, you know, introduction. Thanks for that. I hope you're taking my pictures. Right? Please. I love media. Okay? So, as you all heard, I got polio when I was only nine months old. And scoliosis is a curvature of spine, some curves of my life. Back then, I lived in a four-story building which had no lift and my house was on the top floor. So for the most of my youth, my childhood and teens, I was carried in arms up and down those four floors. My school did not have a lift too. So every day, the four floors of my house and two floors of my school. So when I entered my teens, your age, you know, slowly I became conscious. I realized that I was sculpted from a different mold. I got conscious of how I looked and how people looked at me. Imagine just for a second, guys, just for a second, you being carried in arms every day to this college and taken back. It will psych you. Really, it will freak you out. Well, I could not go to a regular college, but I had amazing friends around the vicinity who went to different colleges. So every evening, I would uh, you know, meet my friends in the compound, Uswakat Kampang Culture Tha, it existed, which today it doesn't. I'm telling you, you have no idea what the compound culture was. It was a second home for us. So every evening I would meet them, I would see them excited. Today we had an event in the college, we had fun, we went for coffee, we went to the pub, we went to the disc. Oh, this guy proposed to me. Today is sari day, chocolate day, and uh, rose day. They would move the rose in their hand and giggle away. And I would just look at them and see at my empty hands with tears rolling down my cheeks and I would ask myself, why me? Later on, I did complete my college from home. As I told you, I could not go to a regular college. Why? Because none of the colleges, universities, educational institutes, coaching classes, most of them did not have access the facilities for students with disabilities. I saw many teenagers, they would discontinue their education after the school because of lack of these facilities. But I was a tough nut to crack. I wanted to fit in into the gang. I wanted to be cool. I didn't want to be leaving, I left behind being a nerd or an ignorant person. I may be not, I could not be part of the, the dance, the drama, the annual day, the picnics, you name it. But yes, I had the intellect. I could at least compete academically, right? So I went ahead and completed my graduation from home. In those days, there was no internet. Can I have the first slide, please? So, you know, the barriers being carried like this. 
right so later on after completing my graduation i tried to dabble in different things because i was just telling somebody uh during the break that i'm jack of all and master of none i like doing different things so i being on the creative side i dabbled in uh handmade jewelry i designed jewelry so when i went down on the fifth floor i saw the design uh, department and i was really very really excited to see then i also dabbled in uh, voice overs i did a crash course in voice overs i wanted to learn my voice uh, for ads jingles commercials i also did radio jockey course i wanted to become a radio jockey but guys every time i wanted to do something in life this monster of inaccessibility chased me at every step and every step every time i failed i asked why me you know it was time that something had to be done after completing my college and now not being able to pursue my career i said bahut ho gaya boss ab to kuch sala karna padega luckily i was exposed and was introduced to the world of disability where i found that it was just not one nino there were many ninos who were facing same issue the same monster the same demon of not having access in their lives and it impacted it impacted everyone's life So luckily back then I joined an NGO which worked for the rights and entitlements of people with disability where I became part of the core team you know the activism I got involved with the movement the campaign to make our country barrier free for all Initially my family they said are you mad are you crazy you're going to fight the system the government kuch nahi hone wala hai just accept the things the way are the way it is and just move on but one thing my family was right i was indeed a crack a crazy person and what did i do i went ahead got involved in street plays morchas dharnas naregaji going to pil the high court you name it the idea was basically to sensitize the society ke boss even we exist we are part of you we are the tax paying citizens pocket mein kuch nahi chahiye we are paying the price i have every right to go to a college to school to office to a mall the theater the salon to the disc you name it but why can't i it's not my fault the system doesn't provide it and what was the outcome we did we did get lot of recognition the awareness we presented papers had these talks on the forums of medical fraternity legal department government architects builders education everything and slowly we saw the changes so today you have universities like you the beautifully accessible campus like this i'm sure most of you when you've traveled you've seen wheelchairs ramps toilets at the airports hotels theaters malls i'm sure you've seen it so that is the kind of outcome that our movement gave us the achievement the milestone the next was the tourism department next slide please so this is some of the uh, challenges even the transport is not accessible next 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 okay no this one so in 2011 three of my friends nishan arvin sunita and myself all four of us wheelchair users we set out on an all india tour by road by our cars and we traveled the entire country 
we went to all 28 state capitals across 40 cities covering 19,500 kilometers in 84 days non-stop. We traveled 500 kilometers by road every day. What was the purpose? The purpose was to sensitize the tourism sector, the hospitality sector, telling them, boss, even we need vacations. We need to go out with our family and friends too for holidays. But where is the infrastructure? Can I go to Taj Mahal today? Can I go to the monuments, the palaces? Can I go river rafting? Can I go to the Goa beaches? No. Is it my fault? No. Because the tourism industry, the hospitality industry, has never thought for, about the tourists with disabilities. And it is not just tourists with disabilities. In India, world over people want to come here. Because our country is so beautiful. We are so much rich, you know, heritage, culture, tradition. We are on the world map today. But where is the infrastructure? So that was, you know, the answer I got that day after this whole tour was over. Why me? Well, today I had an answer. Why not me? And I realized that girl who could not move on her own. Today, I had moved the world around me. Moving on, there was one more challenge that you know, I had to overcome. I had to challenge the perception, the way society looks at women with disability. You know, in India, we have a perception that they preferred fair over dark, dusty, tall over short, thin and curvaceous over, you know, healthy. In such a scenario, where do women with disability stand? Nowhere. So I got that opportunity in 2013, when for the first time in Mumbai, there was Miss Wheelchair India Beauty Pageant being organized. I took part along with 40 pretty women across India who had disability and we had fun backstage, rehearsals, grooming sessions, practices and I found myself helping and supporting each one of them, giving my best and I got a lot of support from each one of them. And what was the outcome? I won the title. So that was the answer. That girl who did not receive one single rose in her teens, today the world was at my feet, the crown on my head, and more than 250 friend requests on Facebook overnight. I was all over the media. Uh, you can go to the back side, please. That, yeah, one more. That is the... Kodak moment, the epic moment of my life. Next. So, guys, when I look back at my curvy journey, I found that, or rather I realized and I learned that, never compare yourself to anybody else. You are you, you are unique. When I battled, I fought against the demons in my head, the limitations, the mental blocks in my head. I could move my mountains. I break, I could break through the barriers and touch my skies. So find that purpose. The day I found the purpose, I found my answer. Why me? Because I had to be the game changer. Somebody had to do something to change the way the world moved around us, the society. Somebody has to be the, do the dirty job. And I'm glad I was part of that movement. So I found my strength when I found my purpose. You can find your own purpose too. It will add spring to your step every morning when you move out of the bed. And before I leave, I would like to share my favorite quote by J.D. Houston. If you want something, 
you, which you never had, then you have to do something which you have never done before. So spread your wings and fly, guys. All the best. <laughs>